in electrostatics and gravitation we found that the uh, force or the field the electric field or the gravitational field was central that is to say that curl of e was zero for the case of electrostatics and which leads to the fact that e can be derivable from the gradient of a scalar point function uh, this is the definition but in the case of magnetostatic the putty the magnetostatic field even the mag even the magnetostatic field is not conservative always uh, it is governed by the ampere circuital law so it is obvious that since it is not conservative the magnetic field since the magnetic field is not conservative uh, it is in general cannot be derivable from a scalar potential magnetic field can be derived from a scalar potential only when j is zero that will, uh, the topic will be taken uh, taken up later on but the magnetostatic field has another property namely the <coughs> namely the grid divergence of b is zero always which enables us to write b as a fun as the curl of some scalar point function r if we call this one is called the scalar potential and this is called the magnetic vector potential if we consider the uh, situation uh, mathematically then uh, we know from the decomposition theorem of vector field that any vector a or uh, uh, sorry any vector b can be written as some gradient of some scalar point function and the curl of some vector point function this is called a scalar potential and this is called a vector potential where alpha is given by <coughs> alpha at r is given by 1 upon 4 pi integration over v prime integration over v prime where r is the relative separation and beta is given by where r is the relative separation so r minus r prime the same convention we are using all through so you see that if the curl of the vector field is zero then there is no vector potential only scalar potential survives that is the case of uh, in case with electrostatics but for the magnetostatic mm, the curl is non-zero that's why the vector potential is there and since the divergence is zero there is no scalar potential uh, it will be found for electromagnetic field which is the which is time dependent electric field uh, still magnetic field satisfies this condition so magnetic field can be given by in terms of the vector potential alone but uh, in that case uh, curl e is no more zero rather curl e would come out to be in will be minus del b del t and we will find that the electric field will be given 
partly by in terms of scalar potential and partly in terms of vector potential <coughs> now if we look at the situation in another way the physically uh, the, uh, the electrostatic field is produced by charges charge Q produces electrostatic field uh, now in the case of magnetostatics the field is produced by ca current element which produces uh, the magnetic field so um, if we consider for the case of electrostatics or in the case of gravitational the source gravitation the source is a scalar quantity so the potential is scalar potential but in the case of magnetostatic the first source is a vector quantity it is i dr prime or j s uh, d s prime or j uh, d v prime whatever may be it is a scalar it is a vector source so the corresponding potential um, is vector potential uh, the this expression for the vector potential can also be derived from Biosovat law. Let me first go to that um, that aspect that the Biosovat law also leads to the um, concept of magnetic vector potential. We have used this concept, however, uh, during the course of different calculations. If we have a vol volume distribution of currents, then the magnetic field, as per Biosovat law, is given by. integrated over v prime this part can be written as minus here we have used the fact that grad of 1 by r is equal to minus r upon r cube that's why the minus sign is there and <coughs> if we rewrite it uh, it this becomes mu 0 upon 4 pi then this comes early earlier we rewrite it as This, uh, this will have two terms one is this term and the other extra term is since this is the differentiation with respect to field coordinate and this is the function of source coordinate so this part is zero so the result is only this and the differentiation with respect to field point and the integration is with respect to the source point so this can as they are independent can be interchanged so we can write curl of mu 0 upon 4 pi integration this quantity upon integration of a prime coordinates is a function of r only and can be written as a of r where a of r is the vector potential at r is mu 0 upon 4 pi integration is j r prime by r dv integration over v prime 
now if we have conductor 2d and 3d con 1d conductor the alternative forms are very obvious so the alternative forms are for 2d mu 0 upon 4 pi or for 1d conductor it is mu 0 upon i upon 4 pi dr prime by r so these are the three alternative forms this is for 1d conductor this is for 2d conductor and this is for 3d conductor mm -hmm. this expression for the uh, for the vector potential we have derived from Biosovet law that is BSL2 vector potential this is the uh, it is easy to show that the uh, this form of this form um, uh, of vector potential leads to the concept that uh, divergence b is equal to mu zero j which is the um, which is the uh, amp differential form of ampere circuital law but before going to that we first like to <coughs> uh, de de arrive at the differential equation that is being satisfied by the vector potential in the case of electrostatic we found that the electrostatic potential satisfies this condition uh, this is the differential equation for electrostatic eco electrostatic potential this is the Poisson equations of electrostatics we are uh, looking for such an expression for the vector potential um, recall that the, there are two equations we have two equation that is one is the defining equation of vector potential is that b is equal to curl a and secondly is curl b is equal to mu 0 j if we plug this equation uh, this expression into this we get curl of curl a is equal to mu 0 j or this is using the vector identity we get this had this term not been there this equation would be very much like this it is the potential is scalar source is a scalar the potential is a vector the source is a vector so let me first uh, have a discussion on this term earlier um, while deriving the uh, ampere circuital law from Biosovet law we have proved that this term is equal to zero here we shall set this term equal to zero from some other consideration we know that <laughs> uh, the vector potential is defined by this term is not unique why if we replace a by a prime such that a, a prime is equal to a plus gradient of scam scalar point function then we will have two fields one is the b prime field b prime field is curl of a prime is equal to curl of a plus this is equal to curl of a because the second term is zero so we have b so the these fields are the same the fields are same so to say this potential and this potential both gives the same magnetic field 
now the potential mm, uh, uh, cannot be measured directly in experiment the experimentally measurable quantity is the magnetic field because the uh, the, ch the force that acts on a charge q moving with a velocity when placed in a magnetic field is this mm, this is the force expression so b is susceptible to direct measurement so whatever the potential may be so long b is same the all the potentials are uh, equivalent that is to say if we change the potential uh, the vector potential by adding a scalar term scalar gradient of some scalar term the force doesn't change in the case of electroscalar uh, potential we have a option of putting phi prime is equal to phi plus some constant both leads to the same va value of the field here the option is a bit wider in here we could use an additive constant here we can use the gradient of some scalar point function so there are uh, infinitely many choices of lambda the requirement is that lambda must be well behaved and differentiable if we choose uh, that value of lambda which makes a prime zero and we call that a prime as a so we can set this part divergence of a is zero this is called a coulomb gauge condition so we set we set lambda in such a way that divergence of a is equal to zero this is a condition known as coulomb gauge condition this is a coulomb gauge condition which simplifies the mathematics drastically so uh, under coulomb gauge condition the equation becomes under coulomb gauge this becomes a at point r is equal to mu 0 j at r now we will compare these two equation this is the vector potential here we had scalar potential the source is the scalar charge density it is the vector current density in mu 0 appears in the denominator uh, uh, sorry epsilon 0 appears in the denominator mu appears in the numerator otherwise this is same so this is vector pause equation this was the scalar pause equation we have vector pause equation now what is what would be its solution let me first uh, consider the solution for this equation and by analogy we will seek a solution of this equation and so that it matches with the form of vector potential that we have obtained earlier so the solution of solution of this we consider a charge distribution within a volume b prime and at around r prime we consider a volume element and our aim is to find out potential at an external point so with re reference to some suitably chosen origin this was r so the potential at point p due to the volume charges within the volume element dv was dq by 4 pi epsilon 0 r where dq the charge within this dq the charge within the volume dv prime is r prime dv prime so the total potential at p is obtained by integrating it 
um, with respect to the volume so this is uh, taken out uh, the SI factor is taken out so we have integration over V prime this is the solution if we consider the x component of this equation the x component of the equation is a x r is equal to minus mu 0 j x at r so in this analogy the solution of a x at r would be mu 0 upon 4 pi j x at r prime by r d v prime integrated over v prime exactly similar expression so this such solution can be obtained for y and z components too and when we add all these components we can come to the solution that um, we, we come to the solution that a at r is equal to mu 0 upon 4 pi j at r prime by r dv prime integrated over v prime the same expression for the <coughs> potential when you will study relativity and four vector we will see that uh, the four potential has four components the three components are coming from uh, the sorry the four potential has um, four components three comes from the three components of a and one comes from this so these are the these constitutes four potential this vector potential together with scalar potential produces the um, four potential and the source or the uh, charge density the fourth charge density has one component from rho and the three components of j so they uh, they will be nicely related amongst each other amongst each other through the four vector notations um, which we will study in the case of special relative in uh, in special relativity <coughs> now uh, i uh, before going further I want to uh, show that the expression for the vector potential leads to the Biosebert law and the ampere circuital law that is our aim is to uh, arrive at the uh, equations for uh, the, or the laws of Biosebert law and that is starting from vector potential we want to go to Biosevert law and Ampere circuital law and this this is our objective right now to so we start with the expression for vector potential for its dimensional conduct which is a at r is equal to mu 0 upon 4 pi and b is given by b at r is given by curl of this so mu 0 upon 4 pi taken uh, out and since the differentiation is with respect to field coordinate and source co integration over source coordinate they can be exchanged so we take nabla within uh, integration sign it will have two term now
first term is curl of j the vector identity that is used is curl of phi times a is equal to phi times curl a plus grad phi cross a this is the vector that you have used since this is a differentiation with respect to field coordinate and it is a function of source coordinate it is zero only this term survives so this is mu zero upon four pi this is minus minus vector r upon r q and if we take this part earlier and the other one is this is nothing but bios over law so we have arrived at bios over law starting from <coughs> vector potential and coming to the uh, hmm, ampere circuit law so this part is done so we got we are taking care of this one uh, this is the expression for b and <coughs> we are after curl b for ampere circuit law it is curl of b so this is curl of curl a it will have two term In Coulomb gauge condition, this is zero. This is zero in Coulomb gauge condition. Coulomb gauge condition, so we are left with this term. Now we use the expression for A, so this is minus Laplacian does not operate on J of R prime because it is a function of prime coordinate, so this we get <coughs> Oh, I have missed, I have uh, missed the 4 pi factor, uh, mu 0 upon 4 pi factor, because this factor should be there. Uh, so this is minus mu 0 upon 4 pi integration g over r prime. this is equal to minus 4 pi delta of r so on integration this leads to the term that is equal to plus mu 0 at j r which is ampere circuit law actually when coming from when proving the uh, ampere circuit law uh, from bios over law from while doing this calculation we have used this technique only thing that we 
showed that divergence of a zero by ch interchanging in the differentiation from the field point to the source point and using vector theorem and so on so here we have just said this equal to zero by using coulomb gauge condition otherwise it is this the same derivation now um, i am coming to the another very important thing is that the uh, multiple expansion of vector potential uh, the multiple expansion if the potential or some quantity varies as uh, 1 by r then it is very convenient to expand it and um, expand it in a a binomial series the denominator quantity can be expanded in binomial series and the the resultant quantity can be looked upon as the sum of few simple terms uh, as we have done in the case of um, electric uh, electrostatic multiple expansion so we are multiple ex expansion of magnetic vector magnetostatic vector potential due to a current loop so we are considering a current loop <coughs> a loop c prime with c prime which carries a current i and the potential uh, if we consider uh, a length element this is the color dr prime so i dr prime is the uh, source coordinate if we have r prime then the potential over here at r is the our aim is to find out the potential at point p uh, due to this uh, the, uh, this due to this wear or closed current carrying wear the magnetic vector potential at p uh, due to this uh, is given by note that the if we write the differential form of the vector potential it is mu 0 i 4 pi dr prime cross dr prime by r so the the potential the contribution of the vector potential over there due to an elementary curl length is proportional uh, or they have the same direction but the total potential over here is obtained by the vector sum of the individual uh, contributions our aim here is something different mm, that is we write 1 by r is equal to 1 upon r minus r prime vector for external point remote external point we choose r prime uh, to be smaller than r so we write it as 1 by r cos theta this is the expansion this expansion we have used several times during calculation of uh, electrostatic fields using coulomb's law so here the theta is this angle and we have assumed that 
r r is greater than r prime so as to say at a remote external point the point at which the potential is being calculated lies far away from the uh, from the current loop actually uh, this theory is extensively used uh, in calculating the effects that is caused by the electron circulating the nucleus the electron circulates around the nucleus in a in an orbit whose dimension or the, the whose dimension is of the order of bohr's radius and we generally find out field at few centimeters away so <clears throat> in that case r is of the order of few centimeters and r prime is of the order of bohr radius uh, so this this square approximation is valid brother this should be the actual case if r is much less than r prime the the, the higher order term becomes more and more insignificant and it would be sufficient to keep the first non zero contribution to the potential so if we substitute this in the expression for l we, oh uh, before going to that let me see. this can become conveniently written as 1 upon r summation over l is equal to 0 to infinity uh, r prime by r to the power l pl cos theta this is called legendra polyne the legendra polynomial has the following property p0 of x is 1 which is the factor of this p1 of x is x which is cos theta P2 of x is half 3x square minus 1, which is this. P3 of x, P3 of x is half 5x cube minus 3x, which is this one, and so on and so forth. So it is most conveniently written using legendre polynomial of first kind so um, if we do this um, uh, the vector potential becomes This R is taken out because the integration is proper prime coordinate and we write it as summation over L from 0 to infinity R prime by R to the power L PL cos theta dr prime. So we rewrite this. summation over L from 0 to infinity mu 0 i upon 4 pi r to the power L plus 1 uh, note that r prime is not involved in the integration so can be taken out so this r to the power L in the numerator denominator and this makes it the and the resultant quantity is r prime to the power l p l cos theta d r prime one writes it where the lth partial wave contribution to the vector potential is 
mu zero i upon four pi r to the power l plus one r prime to the power l p l cos theta d r prime. This is the expression for the vector potential. This part of the board may not be shown properly, so we write it once again over here. The lth partial wave contribution or the lth uh, order pole contribution to the vector potential is this. So this is the lth order multiple multiple contribution to this. Uh, it would be interesting to calculate the vector potential for L is equal to 1 as 1 uh, L is equal to 0 and 1 which we shall take up in the next class.